Hey, we've got some very exciting stuff to show you today. Have you ever seen a computer model running? Of course you have. Here's another one. Very exciting. So let's look at our results. Our model was run in MATLAB and analysis is done in Excel. This is what the MATLAB output looks like. Yeah, doesn't mean much to me either. So after some copying and pasting, some clicking here and there, this is what we end up with in Excel. This may still look like nothing to you, but the basic idea is that someone, not us, went onto the field and collected samples. In our case, they did so on 10 different occasions in different environments in all sorts of weather. Then we run this model in MATLAB. We take the MATLAB output and compare it to the field sample data. Ideally, the two are gonna match up. If they don't, we have to go into the model and make modifications. Making these modifications is called calibrating the model. So how do we do? Our best measurement gave us 70%. 70% of the data was a close match between what was actually measured in the field compared to the 30% that was initially run. So we're pretty happy with that. You're probably asking yourself, what exactly are they modeling? And how did they change this model to improve it so much? To answer your first question, we modeled chicken smell. Yes, chickens. Specifically, we modeled the particulate matter plume coming out of a chicken coop. Now, why would we care about this? Well, since 1980, U.S. chicken production has approximately quadrupled. Now, chickens produce both ammonia and particulate matter. Particulate matter carries with it heavy metals and viruses and causes visibility issues. Now, clearly chickens pose a human health hazard. What can be done about this? Well, one type of remediation is called a vegetative buffer. A buffer would filter the air, removing some of the contaminant load. Now, it's expensive to install a vegetative buffer, so instead, we model it and determine its effectiveness. So, before we introduce the remediation buffer, we need to make sure the model works without one. So, we sample in the field, run the model, and adjust the model until the two match. So this was a sampling setup. The chickens were here, the particulate matter came out here, the sampling points were here, here, and here. We didn't do this part, but we're provided with the data. So this is the Gaussian plume model, which is the basis for our model. It takes inputs like wind speed and temperature and outputs a concentration at points X, Y, and Z. Now, there are more complicated models out there than this one, but we went for simpler. Yes, this is simpler. So this is what the model is doing. Concentration is higher at the middle of the plume and lower at the edges. Changing inputs, like dispersion rate, or sigma, changes the plume width and location. So what do we actually do and why? We started with the initial configuration of the Gaussian plume model and tweaked a couple of things to make it better. One thing we changed was the dispersion, or the width of the plume. The first time we ran the model, it gave us concentrations that were way too high. We hypothesized that if we increase the width of the plume, it will decrease the concentration. We increased the width of the plume in both the lateral and the vertical direction. And it worked. There are two ways we measured our model's performance. One was the precision of the model's measurements, and two was how much of the data fell between 50 and 200 percent of the actual. We also tested the effect of temperature. Now if you remember the Gaussian plume model, temperature is not a direct input. In reality, it plays a part in the dispersion rate. So we hypothesize that the further away from the barn you get, the colder it will be because of the heat that is radiated from the barn from the amount of chickens in the barn. In reality, this did not help our model. So we messed with this and we messed with that. And this is what we got. Notice how nice and close all our points are. Bottom line, we demonstrated that the initial Gaussian plume model is ineffective for modeling pollutant concentrations coming from a chicken barn. However, through our experiment, we showed how making a few minor changes to the model can drastically improve the accuracy. Going forward, we need to one, run more tests given different environmental conditions, and two, adjust the coding to reflect those different environmental conditions.